In the previous several lectures, we discussed the concept of electromagnetic induction. Now, electromagnetic induction is essentially the process by which an EMF is induced within a conducting wire as a result of a change in magnetic field. Now, we also discussed a law known as Faraday's Law. Now, Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction tells us that a change in magnetic flux will induce an EMF within a conducting wire. Now, what exactly is magnetic flux? Well, recall that we define magnetic flux given by phi with the M symbol as the dot product of our magnetic field vector B and our area vector A. And by definition of the dot product of two vectors, this is equal to the product of the magnitude of B, the magnitude of A and the product of the cosine of the angle theta, which is the angle between these two vectors. Now this is known as the magnetic flux. So Faraday's law states that whenever there is a change in magnetic flux, that will produce an EMF. So the induced EMF given by this symbol is equal to negative the derivative of our magnetic flux with respect to time. So this simply gives us the rate of change of our magnetic flux. If this is zero, then there will be no induced EMF. And this equation is known as Faraday's Law of Electromagnetic Induction. Now, so let's look at the following equation. From this equation, we see that there are three different ways in which we can induce an EMF. So let's begin with way number one. So let's look at this equation. Let's suppose we keep our area constant and the angle between these two vectors also constant. If we increase our B, our magnetic field, we increase our flux. If we decrease our B, we decrease our magnetic flux. In either case, if we increase or decrease, we end up changing our magnetic flux. And by Faraday's law, if we change our magnetic flux, we induce an EMF. So, number one, we can induce an EMF if we change our magnetic flux B while keeping A and the angle constant. Now, let's move on to method number two. So, the second way that we can change our magnetic flux and therefore induce our EMF within our conducting wire is if we keep the B constant and the A constant and we either increase or decrease our A. So change the area of the wire loop given by A. And finally, if we keep our B constant and A constant, if we increase or decrease our angle between them, we change our magnetic flux and so we induce an EMF. So the third way in which we can induce an EMF is by changing the angle theta between these two vectors A and B. So, if any of these above three things take place, an EMF will be induced within a conducting loop of wire. So now we have induced an EMF within our wire. What takes place next? Well, this induced EMF will in turn produce an electric current through that conducting wire. And finally, that electric current will produce its own magnetic field. Let's call this magnetic field the induced magnetic field. So notice, we have to make a clear distinction between two different magnetic fields that we're talking about. The first magnetic field is the magnetic field that induces that EMF. Now that EMF induces an electric current and that electric current will create the second magnetic field which we are calling the induced magnetic field. So now we are ready to define Lenz's law. 
So Lenz's law states that an electric current created by an induced EMF points in a direction so that the magnetic field it produces opposes the change in magnetic flux. So, so Lenz's law essentially tells us the direction of our induced electric current inside our conducting wire. So, if our change in flux decreases, if our magnetic flux decreases, then our electric current will point in such a direction so that our magnetic field produced by that induced electric current points in the same direction as the initial, as the original magnetic field. And likewise, if we increase our magnetic flux, if there is a change in flux and that increases our magnetic flux, then the direction of the electric current will point in such a direction so that our magnetic field produced by that new electric current, by that induced electric current, points in the opposite direction of the original magnetic field. Now, that is a bit complicated, so let's look at the following example to simplify things. Let's suppose we have the following magnetic field within the following region of space as described by the following axis. So this is the original magnetic field that will induce our EMF and it points into the board as described by the following axis. Let's suppose we begin with the following diagram. So this is our loop of wire. Now in such a case, our A remains constant, our angle remains constant, and our B is constant. So in such a case, there is no EMF induced. However, let's suppose we quickly decrease the area of this loop. So now the area is given by the following diagram. So because our area decreased, that basically means that a magnetic flux or a change in magnetic flux took place. So because the area decreased, our magnetic flux also decreased. So that means Lenz's law tells us that an electric current will be induced within our electric uh, wire and the electric current will point in such a direction so that the magnetic field it produces opposes the change in flux. So. By decreasing the area of the loop, we are decreasing the magnetic flux and hence, because there is a change in magnetic flux, there is an EMF that is induced. Now this induced EMF will in turn produce an, an electric current that will point in the direction that opposes the change in flux as given by Lenz's law. Now what exactly is this direction? So since the flux decreases, the induced electric current will create a magnetic field B that will increase it. So therefore, the induced magnetic field will point into the board and I is clockwise. So we essentially have to apply right hand rule number one. So because our magnetic flux decreases, that means our induced electric current will point in the direction so that our new magnetic field points in the same direction as the old magnetic field so that our net magnetic field increases and that increases our flux. So our flux will decrease and this electric current will try to increase that flux back to its original amount. So we take the right hand, we wrap it in the direction of our magnetic field, so into the board, and so that implies that our electric current points in the same direction as our thumb, so it points in the clockwise direction.